Hey, what's happening everybody? My name is Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes. In this video, I'm talking logos on the web and more importantly, what format should your logo be on the web? Now I have two different formats, even though I have three pictures. I've got a PNG file at logo.png and I have a logo dot, ooh, stop moving that thing. And I have a logo.svg. So what is the best one to use and why? And this also middle one I wanna take a look at as well because it's also a logo at 3X. And with that, let's get started. All right, welcome back. Once again, my name is Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes. This channel is all about improving your design skills online through code and understanding more of the back end systems in place. Like in this case, we're talking logo file formats. On the surface, they can look the same, but on the back end, they can be much different than one person realizes. If you are a web designer or a web developer who wants to focus on design through code, you have reached the right channel. I am a fine art major by trade, but I also love to code. Kind of a unicorn in that sense. So anyways, let's get to this video. So on the web, we work in pixels. At the end of the day, this is a pixel-based environment. There are pixels going across the screen. But not every pixel is a pixel. And let's get into these three different files I'm looking at. Let's start with the PNG file. So if we go to my finder, and I thought I had the files pulled up, and no, I did not. Let's go into those areas. Here are the three files I'm working with. So I have an AI file, I have a PNG at logo, and I have a logo.svg, and I have a logo at 3x. So the big thing to look at first is where I ever start designing logos online as I always think about AI files. So Adobe Illustrator creates vector-based files, which are inherently what are called lossless. Now lossless means that I can scale this up to the size of an Ikea building and I'll never lose quality. That is your gold standard. And AI for the longest time has really been focused on printing. When you print something, you're gonna have it on paper, which means it should be about 300 DPI PPI or dots per inch or pixels per inch. So in Illustrator, I have this file, logo.ai. And if we zoom in, it is pixelless. It is clean, it is crisp, it is beautiful, it is gorgeous. By having essentially no pixels in an AI file, it's just math at the end of the day. Again, I can scale this file up to the size of an Ikea building or put this on a space shuttle if we had them these days. Uh, yeah, we'd have the Falcon X rocket, but that being said, I can make this as big as I wanted to make this and I'll never lose quality. Now the SVG file is a very unique file format. If I go over to file and do a save as within Adobe Illustrator, there are essentially five formats we focus on. There's Adobe Illustrator, there's the EPS file, which is a gold standard again when it comes to printing. I've never really used the Illustrator template. PDFs are inherently vector-based or lossless by default as they work with Adobe Illustrator. And then there's these last two files. There's the SVG, and the S, or sorry, the SVG compressed and the SVG. Now SVG stands for scalable vector graphics. And it's only really viable if you start inside of Illustrator, which I have done. So what I did was I saved an SVG file and then the trick also in Illustrator is to take out all of this artboard. So what I did was crop it in Illustrator which again, you think cropping in Photoshop is the right way, but cropping in Illustrator is the first step in the process. And if you wanna skip over this part, go for it, but how to adjust your artboard is Shift O, and we bring our crop marks of our artboard down into this picture. So I have essentially an Illustrator SVG file that has not touched Photoshop, because Photoshop is a bitmap based world and Illustrator is a vector and or lossless tool, which means this logo will always be scalable, as in scalable vector graphic, to the size of an Ikea building. And what I get a result 
is it get a very, very small file? Now this logo.svg is approximately eight kilobytes. Cool, looking pretty good. Now, if I wanna make this into a PNG file, I'd have to head over to Photoshop because Photoshop works in pixels. And what happens is this SVG file goes from a vector-based image into a bitmap or a pixel-based image. So what I have here is a 1200 pixel image. And I think the size, I'm not quite sure of the height, I measured the width, was 453. If I divide that by two, three, it's 400 pixels. And that's also why I used, essentially I brought it down to 300 for a little extra oomph on the screen for the most part. So I made a PNG file in Photoshop. I also have transparency inside the picture. And you'll notice that it's seven kilobytes. That's pretty even on the logo.png versus the logo SVG. So for most projects, it's almost the same. And if we look back at our project right here, this top image and this bottom image are essentially the same size. But here's where it gets tricky. Apple decides to throw some monkey wrenches at us. Way back in the day, I don't have the exact number of years, the MacBook Pro and the iPhone turned into retina screens. So what does a retina screen mean? it means that they pack more pixels in per inch. So by default, screens are 72 DPI PPI. I guess it's PPI, there's no dots. But then it became 144 PPI. So what does that look like? If we pull up Apple's human interface guidelines, they actually, I made this page way too big, but on their human interface guidelines, they talk about image size and resolution. So what happens is, is a one pixel at 10 pixels, 20 at 2x, and 3x. The 3x became the big guy all of a sudden. And if we look at it, the scale factor, now the iPhone XS Max equals 3x. And if we scroll down, the iPhone X is now 3x, and the iPhone 8 Plus is 3x, and the iPhone 7 is 3x, and 3x, and away we go. What does that mean? Now I have to cram more pixels in at the same size. And that's what I did. So now what I had to do was, in order to achieve the desired effect of a clean JPEG logo, or excuse me, a PNG logo, I had to cram three times the pixels into it. This middle image right here is logo 3X, and now the size went from seven to 33. But the SVG file can be any size, and still it still says, it's <laughs> it still stays, that's almost a tongue twister right there, at eight kilobytes. So on the surface, this logo at the very top can work fine. But we're talking text, especially in a logo. And it's a little hard to see on the video, and I'm seeing it on my screen. I'm gonna zoom in on the post-processing. But this text is a little bit blurry. I am working on a retina screen right now, and so I can tell the difference between a blurry 1X and a clean 3X. And the 3X looks a lot like the SVG file. What does this all mean? Well, we have 3X. What if we go to 4X? What if we go to 5X? The SVG is essentially future-proofing any future versions, essentially saying that this logo will scale to whatever size you wanna make it. So while the picture itself, I made every max width 300 pixels just to hold it steady, just so I can have it all the right size across the board. So all three pixels have a max width up 300 pixels. I can make it bigger or smaller, but just for display purposes, I kept it 300. So the easy answer is you should make your logos when possible in SVG file format. Now, full disclosure, if you've created your logo in Photoshop, you can't go into Illustrator and magically make it an SVG file. It's kind of an SVG file because you can create the file format, but without those vector-based lines like we have in Adobe Illustrator, with these clean, crisp 
vector-based shapes, this is all pixels. At the end of the day, if I zoom in, notice the pixels right here on the PNG file. And in Illustrator, when I zoom in, there is no pixelization. So if you can see the difference between the SVG vector-based and the PNG pixel-based, zooming in, you can see a difference and it translates down the line to a clean or not so clean picture as we're having more iPhones become 3X. So what's better when possible? The SVG file all the time. And all of my projects I work on, whenever I get a logo from a client, I always insist on SVG as much as possible. It just makes everything easier to work with because I have to worry about creating a 1X, 2X, 3X logo and having it sit inside my browser and then writing a source set to say which device am I working on will apply the 3X to the iPhone X and apply the 1X to just generic browsers. So that is a little bit of a review about what is better to use an SVG or a PNG file when it comes to your logo online. Ready to continue becoming a better web designer through code? Check out more of my videos through my channel, A Designer Who Codes. Thanks so much for watching.